steps discussed in this segment of the video will cover everything that is needed to get this filter online and installed. So going through these components we have shown here, we have our 14 and 16 inch tank distributors and laterals. Now it is important to note that these are generic for 14 and 16 inch tank, but of course depending on the tank size that the valve will get installed on, these internals or laterals will get sized appropriately. We have our inch and a half riser pipe, which gets installed onto this hub. We have our 110 tr volt transformer, but of course this can be equipped for 220 based on the location installation. We have our drain line flow control, our distributor screen, and our strain relief fitting for the transformer that gets installed in the back of the valve. Step one of the installation procedure would be to install the drain line flow control. Again, this is a generic 15 gallon per minute flow control. However, many different sizes can be used, including a two inch. But in this particular video, we're gonna show a one inch. So when installing this, of course, your uh, Teflon must be used with some kind of sealant to prevent any leaks and securely installing the drain line flow control. Um, one very important thing, of course, when, when installing this flow control is paying attention or close attention to the direction of the flow. So since this is the drain and the, the flow direction will be coming out of the valve, the, the direction must represent that. So since the flow is coming out, the flow direction is pointing out and essentially the water is leaving the tank and going to the drain. Step two of the installation procedure would be to lubricate the two O-rings on the valve body and install the distributor cone. So the two O-rings that need to be lubricated are the inner O-ring here and the outer O-ring here that seals the tank and valve. So the, the recommended lubricant will be the DAO 11 which is, an excellent, which is an excellent lubricant used at Pure Aqua here for various O-rings. So once these two O-rings are lubricated, the valve distributor cone gets installed here. So when installing this cone, you must push these tabs in and make sure, of course, that the cone is properly aligned and straight. If not, it'll be a little tricky to install this properly. So once those tabs are pushed in, the cone snaps into place and actually cannot really be pulled out unless these tabs or locks are pushed down and the cone is removed. So once that's done, that completes step number two. Step three of the installation procedure would be to install the power cables coming out of the transformer onto the control board. Again, it is assumed that there's absolutely no power coming into both the transformer or valve and it is safe to work with the valve. Now, when doing so, there is a small strain relief here where these wires get routed through and must be inserted and brought in from the back of the inside of the valve body. Now, once the wires are routed through, the, the wires must be pulled from inside the valve. So to do so, the valve cover must be opened and this just takes a small flathead screwdriver and once, that, once that's open, you know, it's just, you just simply open the valve body cover or door and it's hinged so you can just move it over to the left. After that, the wires get installed onto the back side of the NXT control board. So to do so, there's a small screw here that basically holds this onto the valve body back end here and must be unscrewed in order for this to be opened as well. Again, this is hinged as well, which makes it very convenient. So this opens up to the right and once the wires are run through this, they will get wired onto here, which we'll, we will show shortly. Once the power cables have been run through the strain relief, um, there's three wires here that will get connected. We have a ground, which is connected here, and that's marked on the back side of the valve, and we have our two power cables that get connected on the control board. Now, it's very important to note that there's several places that look very similar on where these can get connected, and only one place can actually accommodate these because the board will get burnt. So on the lower right hand part of the board, there is the connection point which says 24 volt AC. Again, the order of this does not matter how they get wired, but the location does. So once these are installed, no tool is necessary to connect these onto the control board. You simply push these two tabs up, insert the wire, and once that's put, put into position, you know, you can tug a little bit on these to make sure that they will not come back out, which basically means that you have properly inserted the cables on or into the correct position. And after that's done, you know, th 
the, the grounding can be installed. There's a small screw that can be removed. The wire lug gets, basically the screw goes through the wire lug and that gets screwed on to the back end of the valve body here. It gets tightened. And with that, we basically completed the, the termination or wiring side of this. Now, one, once that's complete, you can, of course, close this all back up by tightening this screw, covering the valve body cover and installing this screw. And finally, the strain relief in the back will need to get tightened to make sure that this cable cannot be pulled for safety. Step four of the installation procedure will be installing the valve onto the riser pipe and securely tightening that on the tank as well. So this is just for clarification purposes so the audience gets a little bit better understanding on what the, how the riser pipe gets inserted into the valve. So of course this is just for representation purposes as mentioned. So essentially you have your hub and laterals on the bottom of the tank of course, gravel and media will cover this, and the the, the valve gets gets inserted onto the top part of the the riser pipe, which is shown here. So to show that, essentially, you know, the valve gets inserted here, and if this is properly properly lubricated, the, the pipe easily gets installed, and the valve just kind of goes into the pipe. So continuing uh, with step four here, which is installing the valve onto the tank and the riser pipe, um, just for demonstration purposes, we kind of have this exaggerated where the riser pipe is coming out of the tank. But of course, in a correct installation, the riser pipe is actually flush with the top of the tank. And again, we're assuming the media has been loaded and so on. So once that's all complete, of course, um, the valve gets inserted here onto the riser pipe. Again, this is for demonstration and this is a little bit exaggerated, but the riser pipe will get inserted through the center and this will get screwed on to the top of the tank. So once the, the valve gets properly installed onto the tank and the riser pipe is properly inserted into the center part of the valve, it's very important to make sure that these threads are straight and the, so no, there's no cross threading on the tank because you're installing a metal valve onto basically a plastic tank where cross threading can be very common and is a common issue actually. So once that's once that's basically confirmed, you know, of course the tank, the valve needs to be tightened. So it's about four or five complete turns until the valve is tight and properly installed. So once you get to the point where it's not easy to turn the valve, you typically want to go about a quarter turn and that really represents how tight the valve should be. Tighter than that can actually damage the tank and is not recommended by both the valve and tank manufacturer. This wraps up our Learning Center video and we thank you for watching.